Hey guys, it's Leanna and I'm here today with my January TBR. I can't believe that it's not 2020 anymore. So we want to start the year off right. That being said, I am going to be repeating history a little bit because in the in January of 2020, I was buddy reading a Robin Ha book with Mara and in January of 2021, I'm going to be buddy reading <laughs> Royal Assassin with Mara from Books Like Well. We did discuss this and we accept full responsibility for the fact that if this year goes wrong, it's 100% down to the fact that we have buddy read a Robin Hobb book in January. <laughs> uh, so Royal Assassin is the second book in the Farsi year trilogy. Uh, I'm halfway through it at this point. Uh, Mara, uh, well, I don't know what, I mean, I don't think she started it yet. I didn't manage to finish it in 2020 and I intended to finish it in 2021. She intends to pick it up. So we're, she's going to catch up and then we're going to buddy read the second half. And I'm really excited about it because I would also like to, uh, one of the, it's on my list of series to finish in 2021, the Farseer trilogy. And I kept calling it Mad Ship in like multiple videos, but the Live Ship Traders series is on my list of series to start in 2021. But I can't start Live Ship Traders before finishing Farseer. So anyway, all that to say, I'll be reading Royal Assassin with Mara in January. <laughs> next two are also actually next four <laughs> gonna be buddy reads. Whoopsie doopsie. Okay, well, uh, so my friend Shea uh, and I are gonna be buddy reading two books in January um, because we kind of pitched this idea to the ether and the ether responded positively <laughs> of us reading each other's favorite books. Um, but we're also gonna read our own favorite over again. So these aren't I mean, I, I don't think when I talk to Shea, I don't think either of us is claiming this is our one and only absolute favorite book of all time, but it is a major favorite. <laughs> so I will be reading um, her recommendation that she will also then be rereading Nosferatu by Joe Hill, which I have had on my radar for a while, but I didn't actually own it. Um, and I currently, as of the filming of this video, my copy has not arrived yet. It's coming from the UK. So hopefully I get it soon <laughs> so I can read it, but I will probably um, largely listen to it on audio because she did recommend the audio as well. So I'm excited about that. She originally was trying to push me to read it around Christmas time, but I knew I wasn't gonna have time. So I was like, well, why don't we just, just make me read it in January? And she was like, oh, I will. <laughs> um, and then the book that I'm making her read that I am also then going to reread is The Wolf by Leo Caru, which this will be my fourth time reading this book. <laughs> so I guess you could say it's a favorite. She's heard me bang on about this book for as long as I've known about it. <laughs> so she also, I think, will be largely experiencing it on audio because I did recommend the audiobook and both of us are avid listeners of audiobooks. So, yep, we will be experiencing those books together and hopefully filming a wrap up together of our thoughts about each other's books. So look out for that. And then my next buddy read is Elantris by Brandon Sanderson, which I'll be buddy reading with Jade from the Bedtime Bookworm. Uh, I heard Elantris talked about a couple times on BookTube quite recently, and it piqued my interest, even though I since after that heard people say, well, it's kind of early work and it's not my favorite and it's kind of boring. But the premise still really intrigues me. And it isn't terribly long, especially compared to other Sanderson books. And Jade also wants to read it, so we're gonna read it. And actually, I did buddy read, um, not all, but some of the Mistborn books with Jade. So it feels appropriate to be reading Sanderson with Jade. <laughs> Hopefully we both like it, but I haven't had the best track record with Sanderson, but we'll see. I am intrigued. Uh, and then the next book is The Black Company by Glenn Cook, which is my pick for me and Amanda's um, buddy read of the month. And this is the first book in this series, although I own the Omnibus. So um, if I was, I mean, I I planned to tell you that because I was going to be holding up my books, but since I didn't have all my books, since Nosferatu hadn't arrived, I was like, well, I just won't hold up any for that one book. Um, anyway, uh, I have a thick ass omnibus, so it looks really long, but it's actually not that long because it's only a third of that that the first book is. Anyway, yeah, so the live show will be on my channel at the end of the month. And actually this month, that will be a buddy read with not just me and Amanda, but Mara and Bethany will be also joining us in reading that and in our live show, which is the last Saturday of the month, which is, I believe, the 30th of January this year. So all four of us will be reading it and discussing it. So please join us. <laughs> it is Grim Dark Fantasy. I mean, it's my pick, so no one is surprised. Next up is Northern Wrath by Tilde Cold Holt. I think it's, I, her name's quite tricky looking. I think it is uh, a Scandinavian name. Um, this is a Viking-y kind of book. Like, well, like literally, it's not Viking-y, it's about Vikings. <laughs> oh, and it was actually sent to me by the publisher in September. Uh, so I have an arc of it um, and I just didn't get around to it. I've been kind of dying to read it ever since because it's fucking Vikings. While Vikings is a really wintry thing to me to be reading about, 
it's not like cozy fall and holidays. <laughs> so I feel like ice cold barrenness of January, even though I live in LA, so it's really not ice cold. But the in my mind, January is a cold is a cold and barren month. So it feels appropriate to be reading something about Vikings in January. So I'm very, very excited about that. <laughs> Next up, I have Where the World Ends by, by Geraldine Somebody. I can see the book on my shelf right now. And the, the last name definitely starts with an M. It's Muck something, which is appropriate because the book takes place in Scotland. And I get the feeling that it's kind of, again, this kind of cold and barren landscape. Um, I'm not remembering if it's dystopian or fantasy, but it is, there's something cold and mysterious and dark about it. And that's all that I was thinking about when I put it on my TBR, because as previously mentioned, I regard January as a cold and barren month. <laughs> Keeping that theme going of cold and barren, I'm going to reread The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. I read it when it came out, so it's been a minute, and I would really like to finish the Winter Night Trilogy, but in order to finish the Winter Night Trilogy, I believe I do need to restart the Winter Night Trilogy because I tried reading The Girl in the Tower like a year ago, and I was like, I don't remember what happened in The Bear and the Nightingale. So it's definitely not gotten better since then, so I definitely, definitely, definitely need to reread The Bear and the Nightingale if I ever hope to finish that series. So January being the cold month that it is. <laughs> Thought it'd be a good time for it. Next I have The Evening and the Morning by Ken Follett. This is also Viking-y. Uh, this is a pre-prequel to Ken Follett's Pillars of the Earth. It's another Knightsbridge, no, Kingsbridge, another Kingsbridge story. So he's invented this fictional city of Kingsbridge and, and so he's told different years of history, told stories in different years of history. So it's historical fiction, uh, not fantasy, but Kingsbridge doesn't exist. Um, but he's using it as like playground in which to play out this historical time, like stories in a historical time period without messing too much with like a real place or real people. So Pillars of the Earth uh, was kind of um, Renaissance, med medieval Renaissance. Uh, and then like the prequel to that was uh, World Without End. And now the pre-prequel <laughs> is Evening in the Morning, which again is sort of like Viking era, Viking-ish, Viking-y. <laughs> <laughs> so, hence my interest. <laughs> Next, I have The Girl the Sea Gave Back by Adrian Young, which is also Viking-y. <laughs> this is going to be a most excellent month between The Wolf and Northern Wrath and Evening in the Morning and The Girl the Sea Gave Back. This is just going to be a great time. <laughs> anyway, The Girl the Sea Gave Back is a, a sequel, part two of the duology, um, follow-up to The Sky and the Deep, which is very Viking-y. And so The Girl the Sea Gave Back takes place in the in the world of Sky in the Deep, but it follows entirely different characters. So it's not a, a direct sequel. It's not continuing the story of the characters uh, in Sky in the Deep, but it's the universe of Sky in the Deep. I've heard mixed things about it, but I own it and I've wanted to read it since it came out because I did, I didn't love Sky in the Deep, but I quite liked it. And I've heard amazing things about her new book, Fable. But I figure since I've heard amazing things about Fable, probably better to read uh, Girl the Sea Gave Back first and then Fable instead of reverse order and be disappointed. So, yeah. Like, I didn't mean to poo-poo it so much, but yeah. Uh, and last but not least is Things in Jars by, God damn it, Jess Kidd. Uh, I got it from Book of the Month a while ago. I actually thought it would be a good fall read because my understanding is that it's kind of like um, a Victorian, gothic-y, magical, speculative mystery that's got kind of like magical realism vibes. Like a, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the old curiosities of like the Victorian era where there were literally things in jars and like I'm given to believe that there is something to do with like a mermaid or something there's one on the cover ish anyway it sounds cool and quirky and mysterious which is why I kind of thought it'd be a good fall read but why not January why not hello there after the fact me coming to tell you that I'm also reading the blade itself because I haven't yet filmed the video in which I will say this, but one of my goals of 2021 is to reread all the first law. And if I read one a month, um, that'll be pretty much right on target for having reread all of it before the new one comes out in September. So yeah, add that to my TBR, the blade itself. Those are all the books that I will be reading in January. Uh, please join me in reading any and all of them if you are so inclined, but definitely, uh, Join us in reading Black Company because it's always more fun if you guys come and chat with us during the live show at the end of the month. Uh, so yeah, let me know all the things. I post videos on Saturdays, other random times as well, but definitely Saturdays. So like and subscribe and I'll see you when I see you. Bye.